Veteran Veterans Entrepreneurship Training Resources Network. And, and Lee, tell us a little bit about um, your experience and, and uh, you were talking a little bit about your Vietnam experience here on Vietnam Veterans Day that uh, you were sharing with us that story. Right, Greg. So I, um, I was in ROTC at uh, Northeastern University during the 66, 67, 68 era effort and uh, graduated uh, as a lieutenant, got an MDA at Boston College, uh, went into the military, uh, was teaching OCS candidates at Switzerland, Oklahoma, got my orders to Vietnam. So I was in Vietnam 67, 68, and then uh, January 68, my battalion commander said, go, go get your stuff together, you and I and the sergeant major are getting out of here. I couldn't, I was in the Trang, Vietnam, had no idea where we were going, but the Tet Offensive had broken out that night. We didn't know it at the time, but the North Vietnamese, it hit the city of Hue, which is the ancient capital of Vietnam, with 10,000 soldiers. There were 500 Marines that went up to push them back. You brought uh, an associate along yeah, with One of our tonight. graduates, we just graduated our third cohort on March 3rd, and one of our graduates is Josh Smith from Shamrock Overhead Door, who's, who's with us tonight. Wow, Josh, thanks a lot for coming in tonight. Yes, yeah, sir, thank you for having me. Um, and uh, I'm really proud of the graduates and, and, and what they're doing, and I think Josh here can tell you mm. his own experience. Uh, First hand. He got out of it. So, yeah. Josh, as you as you left the service and you, and you had some problems, you know, finding exactly your right life career, you, you you decided to go into business for yourself. There was just no work anywhere. Well, Greg, to, it was more about survival <laughs> at that point. It was... Uh, when, when I was due to come home, I had reached out to a company out of Braintree that was uh, a large outfit, uh, Cliff Compton, mm -hmm. that was the name of the company, and uh, talked to the owner, let him know that I was gonna be coming home soon. We were going back and forth email, and had a job position set up. Well, when I came home, they shut the doors down. Uh, I guess the, the the crash of the economy got the best of them, and they had to go. And so at that point, uh, it was a it was you know just kind of what year was this, Josh? This was this was in two thousand late two thousand eight. Would it really hit? Right, right yeah. before uh, yeah, right before January two thousand nine. Yeah. So, but you had some experiences already in prior work, so you decided to to take a a, a chance and and. You decided to go out and start Shamrock. It was, yeah, essentially. I mean, it was a little more than that. At, at the time, like I said, it was, I mean, the work was scarce. It was, nobody was hiring. And uh, no matter where I went, it, I mean, even the fact, you know, having the veteran status, no, nothing was, nothing was helping at that time. I mean, it was, it was, it was bad everywhere. I found myself actually working down the street here in Marshfield at Blockbuster. Oh yes. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, there was a, mm -hmm. the, uh, for, for Veterans Day that year, they, they had, uh, so, somehow we did something, ended up in the paper and, and, and what have you. It was right on the front page, and I, I'll never forget this as long as I live. I was at the counter at Blockbuster, and a gentleman came in with his two children, and he, uh, the little boy had, uh, was, you know, tapping his dad, and he said, "Oh, daddy, that was that man was in the paper this morning." Then, um, true story. He, um, you know, he asked, "Oh, was that about?" I told him, "You know, I did this veteran thing, and you know, I was in the paper." And he said, "So you're a veteran?" I said, "I said, yes, sir." He said, and, he, and he leaned over, and I don't think he meant anything offensive by it, but he said, "Aren't you a little overqualified for this job?" And at that moment, it was just, it was like, "Wow." <laughs> Yeah, what was it? I mean, geez. Wow, that's a loaded, <laughs> that's a loaded statement, huh? It really was, and then, and then Blockbuster went out of business. Yes. So I got yeah. the notice that okay, this isn't going to last much longer. So, you know, I had to, um, you know, go. I went back to school for a little bit, and then at, at that time, I mean, I had to had to provide for the family, and uh, you know, we just had our our daughter around that time, so uh, we were running ourselves broke. So the way it works is you have to be in business mm -hmm. and you have to have some success at having been in business so you're not just a startup. Mm -hmm. But the requirements are really a subjective. I, I meet with the individual and I make a decision as to whether or not I think they're qualified for the program. And a lot of it has to do with whether or not they have the passion, dedication, commitment, and perseverance mm -hmm. to become successful. So even though Josh didn't have a long track record, I mean, he sold his business, yeah. he came back, he was struggling yeah. to get it back up. Um, 
And uh, he, he obviously needed resources. He didn't have networks. He didn't have resources mm -hmm. of his own. He didn't know people to call to help him. Um, but I could see that he had the passion. The sales and marketing standpoint, is that one of the areas that you were able to really pick up some pointers and use them moving forward? That, uh, so I, I've always kind of felt naturally somehow I've always had the sales and marketing, but there's always room for improvement. And uh, I can think back to a particular guest that um, that came to the classroom. I, I can't recall his name. His, his expertise was internet marketing. Oh. And he made some uh, points that we you'd never think of when it comes to uh, advertising on like Google, Facebook, and, and how the uh, SEO truly works on the back end. So I was able to use that. It's, we get repeat business from you know, seven years ago. Um, but yeah, we do. We get a lot of referrals. Uh, a, a lot of it, I, I, I hardly have to advertise from just the word of mouth alone. But when I started implementing the social media advertising, there was a boost starting to come up. I didn't, you know, Facebook, you have to pay, whatever. I didn't even have to do that. It's It, it was word of mouth meeting, being smart, and, me, and meeting the people in this program. Some of these guest speakers that come in, I mean, oh, Lord, the, the, the tips and tricks that you get. I find that it's all about how you are with your customers. Mm -hmm. You know, I try, try my hardest to be, you know, right there, Johnny on the spot with everybody, you know, uh, making sure that their needs are met. Um, are we, you know, providing them with the services that they're looking for? Are we the, are we the best at what we're doing out there? And, and we'll turn around afterwards and, you know, I don't like to just throw it out there and say, hey, you know, can you, you know, give us a review? We'll, we'll ask them, you know, if, if you're happy with the service and, you know, everything was good, everything's been met, we do ask if you have a moment, you know, jump onto Google, give us an honest review, and you know, go from there. And, and, and so again, uh, my name is Josh Smith, uh, United States Army veteran, served as an 11 Bravo infantryman. Um, I uh, did a tour in 2008 to Afghanistan. Um, a lot of security, convoy security missions, uh, base security. Um, I, I thought I had job security when I came home. You know, I didn't know we didn't know what was going on back in the states with the economy crash and such. But anyways, um, you know, I, I think I was able to take the discipline. Um, you, you know, you, you hear these horror stories all the time of, you know, something goes wrong with a customer, and and I hear it in the trade that the that the technician or the or the owner will you know cuss the customer back out, and then you hear the. Uh, the customer's always right. Well, you know, I take that, try to use the military experience, the military bearing, when it comes to getting that positive feedback from the customer, and when it comes to making sure they're getting that good service, you use that military bearing, you just open your ears, you just try to understand. That's all, I, I, that's why, that's that's probably one of the best ways that I'm able to apply the military experience. And, 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 and not to mention, we've been through, oh my God, I mean, there was a point where I did grow the company to, to uh, 13 employees. We, I, I grew it. And it just it, it happened almost on its own. But I didn't have the business structure. Mm, mm. Now, we've been through theft, you know, people breaking into our shops, stealing things. I mean, I had my laptop stolen uh, in 2012, had all my combat uh, pictures and videos and everything that I was going to show my kids one day got boosted right out of it. Yeah. Went through a fire in 2000. Literally. You'd think, you'd think for a company wow. called Shamrock Over at Door would be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> there it is right there. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that when, when I met Lee, when we went out for coffee, you know, he didn't send somebody out to come and see <laughs> yeah. me. He came himself and he sat and met with me. And I said, whoa, and I didn't even, again, I didn't even understand what I was getting into. So until. let me back up a little bit, Greg. So one of the areas where we get a lot of our mentors is a company called the Turnaround Management Association. Turnaround Management Association is, a, is an organization I helped form back in the early 1990s. It's now an international organization of about 10,000 members, and it consists primarily of attorneys, bankers, asset-based lenders, uh, professionals uh, dealing with businesses and running businesses. And um, 
So we have about 550 members in, in Boston. Wow. They're probably the largest networking organization in the Northeast. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so the executive director of that is actually the program manager for veteran. Uh, the uh, the attorney who was the past president last year, his name is John Lockney, with the Nutter Law Firm in Boston, is on my board of directors, and he's one of the speakers who comes into the program. So we have tremendous access to these resources, which I never had, and I'm sure you never had. No. To have someone as the enabler, as the as the hub of this program, like Lee, with this unbelievable contact list. When I needed something, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, well, I think it had something to do with a. Um, life insurance or something. It was, it was an insurance, insurance finder, yeah. He was, boom, got a guy, called him.